right, hey, thanks for checking out another one of my videos. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Today I'm going to show you the correct way to float a shower pan. I do have some other floating of shower pan videos, but they're kind of old, not real good quality, and I wanted to do it in my shop so that we could get a close-up of everything. So why don't you come in here, Johnny, and we'll show you what I got. So I have this right here isn't required. But this is actually a drainage mat. It's called Schluter Troba. And it allows underneath the, the, the mortar to drain better into the weep holes. So I have other videos. I'll put up the card of making waterproofing the vinyl pan liner. But basically, you see I've already got it waterproofed. Um, and this, this drainage mat is going to allow everything to work its way down to the weep holes. Okay, so you see the weep holes right here? This is for any water that gets under the tile to be able to drain down and get into the weep holes. And also there's little channels under this collar here that allow any water to get down into the drain and out. So we need to be careful not to block any of these weep holes. So that's why we use gravel. About the height I want. I like to have my deck floats at least an inch and a half. And yeah, we're gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and put those all around the drain. And that's to protect those weep holes. Okay, so. I'm just gonna dump our deck mud in. Again. This is deck mud. I'll put up the card so you can see our deck mud. It's a dry pack and I'm not going to go over it too much because I have other videos on it. But yeah, this is uh, what we use. So I'll put up the card so you can learn more about how to use deck mud, how it's made and all that stuff. One of the first things I like to do is get uh, my wheat protection kind of covered up so it doesn't get moved around when I'm floating. So I'll just start by packing in my deck mud up to the drain here. That's actually going to help keep my, my drain from moving around too much too. And if I was on a job, I'd probably protect this drain with, with tape, put some blue tape or stucco tape on there. But since I'm in a shop and I want you to be able to see the drain, I'm gonna leave it. And this is just a wood float. So you can pick this up at your home improvement store, tile shop, wherever. And I'm just kind of spreading the mud around. So the slope we want to get is a quarter inch per foot. So this is a two foot level. My longest run is about two feet. So I'm gonna want a half inch of fall from this point to this point. I also have to take into account that my tile, this is the tile we're going to use, is going to be a little bit lower. It's going to sit right there. So I want to get, when I'm level with the bubble, I want a half inch. So I'm too high there. The other thing I can do is take another scrap piece of tile to put here. It kind of helps create a little spot to screed off of. So, we are half inch, I'm still a little high. There we go. So you can see the bubbles in the middle on my level. And I have a half inch gap right there. So that's the correct amount of slope. So I know that this point now is what I want to make my whole perimeter. I want to make the whole perimeter level with that spot. So the way I do that, so now you can see the bubble is in the middle, but I'm a little high, come down, right about there. So now I have a level three point.
So that side's level. I'm going to take my two foot level and do this side. See, I'm right there, level there, bubbles in the middle. Now I'm just going to continue it. Right there. So that's level. And as you can see, when I pack my mud down, it gives me an indentation because I'm going to screed off of that line there. I'm going to come to this side. Give myself some more mud here. And we are level. Gotten off. Because you should be level from here to here. And there. So I'm level. Now I have my perimeter all level. So now all you got to do is fill in and screed. So. Make sure you keep your wood float nice and nice and clean. You don't want your mud to get built up on there. It'll start dragging things around. Now I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I need to be. Again, if you're uh, used to working with uh, mortar, like wet mortar, uh, this is so much easier using deck mud because you can move it around and it doesn't slump. So much easier to work with. Okay, so now I have a little actually notched. I've actually notched the tile so that, or notched the stick around the tile so that I get the right height at my drain. So I'm going to take this stick and put it on the drain. So that I get, I allow the room see I'm leaving enough room there for my tile and I'll do this other edge here And if you're a beginner, you might want to put a little tile in each corner. That way it's, you just know that you haven't dug too deep. You leave that tile there. When you're using deck mud, make sure you're packing it down. You kind of get it where it's supposed to be and then pack it into place. So now I'm going to do this edge. Make sure it's packed at the drain. Do the same thing on this side. Okay, we're good there, so I have that. And I'm actually going to trim this stick a little bit because it's too long now to, to meet the short sides. That's about right. So now I can kind of start moving my mud around my screed point is right here you can see careful not to go past that you want your tile on a shower pan to be level all the way around and then fall to the middle so you're actually going to have a little more slope on the short ends than in the long ends. I'm doing a lot of this kind of just by watching my stick drag across. Careful not to dig into my my screed that I'd set up. So there, there's there's one part of the pie. So I'm just going to do this in sections. I'm going to do do this section, then that section, and go around.
And the easiest way to keep your, your perimeter screed so that it doesn't get messed up, if you get mud up against it like this, just kind of peel it away like that gently. And then that's revealed again. The, uh, the bulk of it out, I've done up every four sides of my pie. I have, now you can use either your wood float or I have a foam float that works really good for this. Um, it just tends not to dig in as much. So I'm gonna go around and just give it another little tamp down. The next thing I'm gonna do is kind of finish it. You can see right now it's kind of rough looking. But once I take this, this float, I can you know, use it in a circular motion, and it really takes a lot of this stuff out. You see, I'm just kind of working, working everything to get it really nice and smooth. Tamping it down. So the last thing I'm going to do is take my finishing trowel and then make it really really smooth just pushing it down and just finishing it So I'm, I'm using some force here, pushing it down. It's doing a couple things. It's packing the surface to make it harder, and it's also making it smoother. And little things like this, see this little tiny thing? You can fill that in with thin set, but I like my floats to look really pretty. So you can see how, how that works there. And what did that take me? About 15, 20 minutes, so um, yeah. So hey, thanks again for checking out my videos. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, leave comments, click like and subscribe. Rock on, guys. Talk to you soon.